Welcome back, and I'm Max, your host for this episode number 17. So for today's vlog, we're playing a tag team tournament. I'm not a tournament player, so what's the best thing to do when you're playing a tournament and you're not playing, uh, used to play is you have a teammate that's gonna carry, out, carry you throughout the game. Anyway, I'm gonna still show some cash game afterwards, and let's find out how it goes. Tag team tournament. First, you choose a partner with whom you want to win. Second, first four level everyone plays. Third, after the fourth level, your partner and you regroup your chips. There's only one rebuy per team during that time. Fourth, only one person per team will play afterwards and you switch at each level. And fifth, you have only three consulting chips you can use at any time. And my first real hand of the poker tournament was Pocket Kings Under the Gun. So the blinds were 300 and 600, so I did a 2.5x, $1,500, and only the middle position calls. So heads up to see a flop, which was 10, 9, and deuce rainbow. So I do a little C bet of $1,500, the middle position calls, the turn was a 7 of heart. I continue C betting with over pair of 3.5k and he folds. So I didn't got any action. Next turn is King Jack offsuit in the undergun plus one position. Blinds were 400 and 800. So I decide to open at $2,000. The mid low jack position decide it's not enough and re raise me to four thousand dollars so that's a min raise and for unfold and i don't want to look weak so i decided to make the call flop is jack three four and two clubs so here i'm not yet gusher i'm gonna let him play i decided to check and he checked back what i'm thinking about he's either having ace king ace queen or a middle pair under the jack and turn is a six of club here so i decided to make a bet of two thousand dollars and he calls and the river is a two of heart so i decided to continue with a little bet of two thousand dollars and he calls back show my hand and i've won the level was done and i switch with my partner and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy the content i switch position with my partner and i look at my stack and it was only 19k the blind were 1500 and 300 so that's around like 6.3 blinds left so i was in a all in mode the button put a raise at 6k so I decided to go all in in the small blind position and he thinks and makes the call. It was jack four against ace, flop was five, seven, nine, turn is a king and the river was an ace. I have won my double up. The blind is 1.5k and 3k. Undergun plus one decided to limp and the bottom as well. Open my hand, it was pocket aces. Now I decided to put a 5x their bet at 15k. And they both decided to fold, so no action here with my pocket aces. My turn was done, and I give my chip backs to my partner. Nothing really happened during that time, but we made the final table. My partner did a good job, and she carried me up to this amount of money. That was great. For this end, the blinds were 5k and 10k. I look at my stack, and I was around 10 big blinds. So I told to myself my strategy was if I had any pocket, and if I had any aces, I would show. And that what happened. I was in the small blind and I decided to shove, big blind calls, and it was ace five, again, ace 10. The flop is queen six, four. So I got to have like back door straight. The river, uh, the turn was a seven. So any eight or any three would be great, but the river was a four. So now this is the end of my tournament. The tournament was long, I didn't play a lot of hands so i was excited since it, there was a cash game and let's go to the cash game so now it's show time in the cash game i'm in the straddle position there was a double straddle and a triple straddle the middle position decided to limp three other limps as well so now i look at my hand and i got pocket nine in my straddle position everyone decided to just limp i felt some weakness and then i wanted to go like i'm ready to rock and roll in my cash game so i decided to book a raise at 175 and the first limper decided to go all in and he covers everyone so for technically 125 more i'm pretty much all in so i made the call and it was a pocket nines again pocket eights so i got a dodge any eights flop is clean turn is clean and the river is clean so first in and i've double up reckless but more fun
I'm in the cutoff position with ace queen. The undergun plus one position decided to put a bet at $15. Middle position call. I decided it's not enough, so I three bet at $60. And only the bottom calls. So heads up to see a flop, which is jack of heart, six of heart, and a four of diamond. Here, I decided to check because I know the bottom is C bets a lot. And he does exactly that, and he put a $41 here. So now for this low amount, and I got two overs, I decided to make the call because I might represent like kings, queens, aces. So I just decided to call. Turn is a fourth club here. So I still decided to check, maintain my story, and he bets $57. Now I think that's really weak because it's such a small bet seeing all the previous action. So I decided to pump it up at $175 and he's not a believer and he makes the call. The river is a savior and it's an ace of club here. Now I told to myself, even if it wasn't an ace, I would have shoved any a card because I was telling to myself that I want to represent queens, I want to represent kings, or I want to represent aces. So, and now the ace on the river, so I decided to shove anyway, and he makes the call. Now, knowing this, he probably would have called anything, so I don't think it's the right strategy. But he showed, I showed my hand, I got ace queen, and he shows that he got queen jack, so I've won. My next hand is king two in the big blind position. There was a straddle and the low jack, high jack, small blind decided to call. So here only $3 more. And I like to call sometimes to see what the straddle could do. And I made the call. Strider side, it's not enough and put a raise of $25. And everyone decided to call. So since I got, I call at five, why not call at 25? It's exactly the same thing. So we are multi ways to see a flop, which is 10 diamond, king of spade, and a king of diamond here. Now I told to myself that it was pretty much a wet board, so any diamond probably would call, any kings probably would call, any straight jaw would call. So I decided with my king deuce, I decided to make the lead and I put a $30. And only the hijack decided to call. So heads up to see a turn, which is a two of diamond here. Now I've hit a boat, that was great. Uh, I felt that when he called, he wasn't that strong and he tends to overcall as well. So now I want to make him pay. So I decided to continue my story and put a bet of $75. And he makes the call. The river is a 10 of club. Now that was weak, 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 weak because it killed so much my action. If the other player had a, a diamond, now he probably going to be scared because any king or 10 would probably be the winner here. So, uh, but I thought that he might call me all the way down with either like a 10. And since I got a king, I got to make some value. So I put a bet at 125 and he falls. And he told us that he had pocket nines. In this next hand, the undergun plus one open at $15. The middle position and the low jack decided to call here. And with my pocket five in the small blind position, and normally you don't want a 10 off tend to call often in the small blind position because you're the first one to act. So you really need to either have a strong hand and normally you want to raise. But since there's not a lot of raise in these kinds of hand and $15, three ways, I decided to make the call and big blind call as well. So five ways to see a flop, which is queen, seven, five, rainbow. So now here, since it's not really a wet board and I wanted to see what the other player would make a aggressive play or not, so I decided to check, be a sneaky check, and everyone decided to check as well. So still multiple ways to see a turn, which is a eight of club here. Now I, I want to make some money, so I decided to put a bet of $25, and only the low jack decided to call. So heads up to see a river, which is a queen of diamond here. Now I told to myself, if he had a queen, he probably would call previously, but sometimes people just check back with their queen as well on the flop. So I decided to put it on the larger side of $100, and he makes the call. I show my hand of a boat, and he folds. In this next hand, there was one limper from the undergun plus one position, and I opened my hand, it was pocket kinks in the low jack. And people tend to really call loosely, so I decided to put a raise in the higher range of $25. The small blind calls and the other gun plus one calls as well. So three ways to see a flop, which is queen of spade, five of spade, and an eight of club. Now the small blind decided to do a dunk bet. 
And here, since it's pretty much a kind of wet board and I since I have position, so I decide to make the call. The turn is a three of diamond here. Now the small blind decide to go with a $50 bet as well. And normally when people tend to make the same bet as a previous round, it's like some weakness. So I decided to put a raise here of 175 and he makes the call. So heads up to see a river, which was a nine of club here. Now there was a possibility of straight here, of six, seven, but the flush misses. But still again, he dunks bet me of $100 here. Now, I don't see a reason to re-raise here because what worse could call me and he probably have a strong hand and want to extract some value. So I just decided to call back and he shows a three of spades. So he had two pair and a flush draw. So we technically he could have re-raised me on the turn, but normally this guy tend to be really light when he still do two bets. So anyway, it's a cooler. In this hand, the double straddle was on. The low hijack, cut off, small blind, all decided to limp. So I look at my hand, I got pocket eight in the straddle position. So I decided it's not enough, $10, and I put a raise of $80. The double straddler calls and the hijack calls. So three ways to see a flop, which is nine of diamond, jack of club, and a nine of club. Here, I didn't want to be out of position and make a call and make the pot higher than it already is. So I decided to check back and everyone else check as well. So still three ways to see a turn, which is a 10 of spade here. Now I wanted to do a like a trap or either like I don't ha I only have eight, so I decided to check back as well. And the double straddler under gun plus one position decided to put a bet $88 hijack, decided to fold. So here with my pocket eight, I still could make a straight, I still could make a boat. So I decided to call the $88. The river is a seven of diamond here. And now I've played an orthodox play because I've led because I didn't want any nines to check back but if he had a nine what else would he had a nine with nine ace because if he had nine jack nine ten he would probably do it boat and he probably had wanted to play sneaky so I don't know what how my play on this round was smart or not I decided to lead at two hundred dollars half pot but I don't know what I accomplished at all I just didn't want him to check back and I knew that he tend to call light so that's why I did my $200 but normally this play makes no sense a lot decided to put my bet and he folds so for today's thoughts is that I prefer cash game versus tournament because I think tournaments are way too long and you don't even know if you're gonna make the cash at the end of the tournament and sometimes you don't even have the flexibility as a cash game to want to make some move because sometimes up the blind, you like stock and you just go, okay, I'm gonna go all in. So that's why I prefer cash game because you go in and you have the first hand, you can go like, poof, make some, a lot of money. And yeah, that's one of my reasons I prefer cash game because it's more fun. You have more in the, if you're deep, you have more strategy. Instead of a cash game, a tournament, you're usually having low stacks and you like, oh, like, in my probably I have to play more tournaments to make some more moves, but I prefer for now way cash games. Write down in your comment down below if what do you prefer, cash game or tournaments? And see you on the next one.